Hello friends, I'm Doug Terrell, and this is History and Comments for Thursday, August the 19th, 2021. In the year 295 BC, the Romans dedicate the first temple to their goddess Venus. She was considered the goddess of love, beauty, and fertility. It should be noted how those subjects are common in the religious worship of most pagan religions. Judeo-Christian thought is unique in their approach. 43 AD, Gaius Julius Caesar Octavius, later known simply as Augustus, compels the Roman Senate to elect him council. August must be a good time for witch trials. 1692, the Salem Witch Trials get started in Massachusetts. Reading through accounts of the events, it's quite hard to grasp the mindset of the villagers. What they were calling witchcraft was not so much practicing dark arts, but more outliers to the strict Puritan order. Nearly all of the accusations were vague and quite often were the result of some personal squabble. If you and your neighbor are at odds, just accuse them of witchcraft. Also a high percentage were women. The Puritans considered women more susceptible to temptation and unable to resist demonic influence. As those events were almost a century before the Constitution, it's easy to comprehend how some of our laws on trial and evidence came to be. The next to the last sigh of the Revolutionary War happened on this day in 1782. The Battle of Blue Licks in present-day Kentucky was 10 months after the British Army surrendered at Yorktown, Virginia. This battle pitted Loyalists and Indians against local militia forces. One more skirmish will take place in present-day West Virginia. These seem to be a case of the news had not reached them or Cornwallis surrendered and I didn't. During the War of 1812, the American frigate, the USS Constitution, engages the HMS Guerriere. It was noted how the cannonballs bounced off the thick white oak planks of the Constitution, and she was given the name Old Ironsides. It will be another 50 years before ships are actually clad with iron. The USS Constitution is still on the Navy's active roster and is docked in Boston Harbor. French inventor Louis Daguerre this groundbreaking photographic process is demonstrated in 1839. In an act of generosity, the French government purchased the rights to the process and then proceeded to make them public as a gift to the world. The process was far from perfect and required long exposures, but it was the first workable photographic process. Daguerre died of a heart attack in 1851. That's a bit of a surprise. To develop the daguerreotype plate, it was exposed to a hot mercury vapor. How he and others did not go mad from mercury poison is a miracle. Cyrus Schofield is born in 1843. Schofield is responsible for the study Bible that bears his name. He also promoted the idea of dispensationalism, dividing historical time into five epics, placing current time in the sixth and a future seventh. News travels slowly in 1848. But eight months after the California gold rush took off in January of 48, news of the strike reaches New York City. Aviation pioneer and self-taught engineer Orville Wright is born in 1871. This makes him only 28 at the time of his and brother Wilbur's historic flight. Singer, milner, fashion designer, and perfumer Gabrielle Coco Chanel is born in 1883. Born into rather humble settings, Miss Chanel managed to gain a foothold on the world stage, but she had a dark side. She was rabidly anti-Semitic, and while it was denied at the time, later documents confirmed she was more than cozy with Nazi Germany in World War II. The Indianapolis Motor Speedway holds its first race on this day in 1909. The day's bill features a series of two-lap heat races and a 250-mile feature. Canadian Wilford Billy Broke wins one of the heats but crashes in the feature, he and his ride-along mechanic Harry Holcomb die from their injuries. There will be a 100-mile race in late May of 1910 before the inaugural 500 in 1911. Top average speed of the, ninth, of the 09 race, a blinding 53 miles per hour, and there were only nine cars in the race. Publisher Malcolm Forbes is born in 1919. Star Trek creator Gene Roddenberry is born in 1921. 
Roddenberry's a freelance script writer before Star Trek made it in 1966. The original Star Trek series only ran for three seasons. Jockey Billy Shoemaker is born in 1931. And while we're on the subject of racing, the first All-American Soapbox Derby was held in Dayton, Ohio in 1934. The interest in coaster cars on a downhill course peaked in the 1950s, drawing as many as 70,000 spectators. Former President Bill Clinton is 75 today. The European Eastern Bloc is beginning to unravel in 1989. Several, several hundred East Germans managed to escape over the border to Austria and Hungary. This is one of the events leading to the fall of the Berlin Wall. The Eastern Bloc was held together by a strong Soviet Union. But the Soviet Union was falling apart, partially due to the inefficiencies of the Soviet society and bankruptcy from trying to maintain a superpower military. In 1991, the Soviet Union falls completely apart. Mikhail Gorbachev is forced into, to step aside. And from the what could possibly go wrong department, in 2017, Atlant Atlantic salmon are being farmed in a, off the waters of Washington state. Atlantic salmon are not native to the Pacific, they're Atlantic salmon, but they are more adapted to farm culture, and they are kept in pens. Of course, no animal or fish has ever escaped a pen. This time, it was as many as a quarter million now swimming in the wild of the Pacific. Officials immediately opened Atlantic salmon to unlimited fishing, and maybe half were caught. There are no reports of any long-term negative effects. And that's history for August the 19th. I'm Doug Terrell. Now go do something worth remembering.